Hi everyone, I hope you all had a very very good Christmas. I want to do a video on Final Cut Pro X and how it actually works and optimizing your computer for Final Cut Pro X. Now, I'm talking Final Cut Pro X, but this could the same thing would apply for whatever software software you're using. If you're having problems with your software slowing down or doing maybe Photoshop, Lightroom, whatever, it all principles apply. You need to know how it works. Now, a lot of people always say to me, John, you're so bright, you always want to know how everything works and you always want to know this and you always want to know, know that. But it, it it's not true. The reason why I want to know how it works is not because I want to know how it works. I need to know how it works so that I can optimize it and, and when I get a problem, I can fix it. It's like going in manual on your DSLR and not understanding what the ISO does and the shutter speed. You're not going to get very good pictures, are you? You need to understand what the ISO does when you turn it up, what it does when you turn it down, what it does when you speed your shutter up. What it does. You need to know how it works. Now, some people think they don't really need to know how the software works. Um, they can just use it. Now, if you've got a monster computer and you're not having no problems, that's probably true. You probably can just use it and, and it's doing what you want it to do. But we, we, we all are millionaires and we all are buying a £1,000 hard drive or free hard drives for £1,000. It's just not realistic. But I tell you now, I watched a video the other day from Matt and Dave Dugdale, which I absolutely loved. They was talking about editing and, and what, what specs the systems were and some of their specs was phenomenal and the I know Matt particularly he said he was having a problem with multicams in Final Cut where he gets a spinning egg timer now that is for one reason and one reason only because that he's not optimised or I, I, I don't know what he's done 100% I don't know if he understands how multicams actually work in Final Cut Pro because and the reason why I say that is I didn't either, and when I started doing multicams, I was getting the same thing as Matt got. But then what I did is, I went out and I bought three one terabyte hard drives, and I raided them up, so I was getting something like nearly 400 meg read and write speed, which is phenomenal, it's well good enough, and I had a three terabyte, I'll just minimise final cut and show you, and I had a three terabyte RAID drive. Now, they are all internal drives, these, so basically my boot drive is an SSD, I have got 16 gigs of RAM, and I have got a quad core processor. Um and I and a three terabyte RAID drive. Anyway, I started doing tests in Final Cut and I wanted to dig into Final Cut and find out exactly how it works so that I know that I can optimize my system for Final Cut and see if it works better. Anyway, if you look, I'm just gonna show you if I get info on this drive now and we come to the center of the screen, you'll notice that it's actually after my tests, I realized that the third hard drive I just didn't need. So I'm using two one terabyte 64 meg cache hard drives, which are monkey nuts to buy. They're cheap, they're not expensive at all. It's a decent size editing drive, two terabyte. I can easily edit a wedding. I could edit two weddings on it and then delete them when I've finished. Um, like I say, I could put my third one, connect it back up and have a three terabyte. It'd even be quicker. But that's giving me about 280 to 300 meg read and write speeds. Um, and it's only two hard drives. So there you go. There's not much money in them. I bet you could pick up two of them now for, for £100. Brand new with 64 meg cash. So there you go. So that's not expensive and it's big. If you went to go buy a two terabyte SSD drive, which that'll definitely be the way to go in the bloody future and raid them up as well, because I've done that before. I've raided two uh, 240s up and I was getting a gig read and write speed, but it didn't. You don't need it. If you know how Final Cut works, you don't need it. Not unless you'd maybe do in 4K. If you're doing 4K editing, then fair enough, you might do. So there you go. That's all I've got there. Two crappy hard drives. So we'll go back to this window here. Now, it's saying what I do. I'll just tell you what I do. Um, when I come home from a wedding or, or anything that I need to be safe, I'll copy them, the file straight to a, a drive where they don't get touched. Then I'll open Final Cut, I'll, I'll usually tidy them up on that drive then and create my multicam folder and create, I'll tidy all the folders up so, there. And then I'll open Final Cut and I'll tell it to copy them into the library and the library will be on the RAID drive. So it, it makes a copy to the RAID drive, then I've automatically got two copies as well and I'm editing from the two terabyte RAID drive. So that's that. 
You could hit leave files in place and it'll just make aliases, but that way you're not getting a backup. But if you don't need a backup, and to be honest, depending on where they are, if they're on a slow drive and you tell Final Cut to leave them there, then you're working on these multicams off of a really crap drive. Um, so it's not going to work right well. Um, so that's how that works. Now, a lot of people get confused here. You've got Create Optimized Media and uh, Create Proxy Media. So what is this, right? Well, you can see it says select to create high quality copies of media for optimized editing, Apple ProRes 42, 422, <laughs> right? So what happens is, and I've been guilty of it, a lot of people think, well, hang on a minute, I've got a nice RAID drive, I've got a nice quad core, I've got 16 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM, I don't need this, I don't need to tick this setting. Now, I'll tell you now, depending on what footage you're working with, um, if you're working on 4K, I don't have a clue, but I know the specs of 4K, and that two terabyte RAID drive, wouldn't apply this this setup wouldn't apply for that you would be better off i know matt was talking about somebody recommended that you use a boot ssd drive a cache for ssd a read for ssd and a write for ssd so you'd have four or five ssds which, which that would be the way to go or a bloody load of raid drives um you could you could get raid drives and do it that way as well but this system works absolutely well for mods coming off the dslr which i know that that most of us use don't we we use dslrs right and it's 1080p at 25 frames 30 frames 24 whatever um so this create optimized media a lot of people don't tick it and neither did i i never used to tick it because i thought well i'm a big boy don't need it and to be fair when you're editing just normal clips like these here say you've been to the brides and you've it may not be the brides it could be whatever but you've done 70 clips of a uh, uh, different five or six sec second clips you don't really need to create optimized media for them final cut will play them back on the timeline perfectly fine and you can chop them cut them and edit them and th th they actually edit fine but where it does come into if we just hit this now let me just have a look um create optimized media let me go to the editing I'll find out where it is it's this one you see where it, I'm going to go back to that one as well, but you see how it says create optimized media for multicams. So even if, if you import and you go, I'll tell you now, just before I go any further off the bat, I've started, that gets ticked. When I do a wedding, that's ticked. I'll let it encode everything. Even though my system doesn't need to do most, it only really needs to do the multicams. It doesn't have to, just, I'll let it do it. And it takes about three and a half to four hours. But I just do something else. No problem. I've always got something else to do. I walk away and leave Final Cut. Then when I walk back and I've got 100% indicator here, I can edit smooth as a bitch. <laughs> I'm editing smooth as silk. I'm relaxed. I'm happy. I'm not waiting for spinning beach balls. Yeah, I'm not a big master. And I can't say, ooh, I don't keep create optimised media tick. But I do have a smooth experience. So it's up to you what you want to do. Now, you, like I said, you don't have to leave it ticked. You could untick it and you could just obviously create optimised media for multicams. If you don't tick that, you must have a, a £5,000 system to play back that multicam. The, the SSDs, running S, all SSDs separate for read, write, um, for your boot drive, for your cache, that would probably play multicams back without creating optimised media. But if you haven't got that, you need to leave that ticked. So if you've unticked it, that's a very, very bad move. If you've ticked it, what happens is, let's just go to this multicam sequence here. Let me just untick this. When you go to this multicam sequence here, when I created this, basically I selected all the files and I created a multicam clip. What happens is, Final Cut will transcode the clip uh, into Apple ProRes. Um, and usually your wedding is your multicam, if it's a wedding or your interview, they're the longest clips, aren't they, anyway? That your little ones to transcode to Apple ProRes might take six seconds each clip. So they're very quick anyway. That's why I just let it transcode them. Um, and plus, it, it just when you're editing them and adding effects onto it as well, that's another thing. When you're adding effects, you'll find out that Apple ProRes will like it much, much better and it can play it back much, much smoother. So it's not that you, you've got a crap computer because you're ticking it. You're just ticking it to make things run good for yourself. Do you know what I mean? It's like when you put more RAM in your computer, you're doing it just to make it run that little bit better. Why not create optimised media? Yeah, 
if you're in a really big rush and you ain't got no multicams, you probably don't have to if you've got a decent spec computer. Um, so I'm not saying do it on everything, but if it's a decent project and you're going to be on it a while, you might as well leave it ticked. So what happens is if you create your multicam, and I used to do it, multicam created. As soon as it created it, I dragged it onto the timeline. I opened the viewers. Uh, let me, can I open the viewers? Um, multicam viewers. Just hang on, show angles. And we've got one, two, three angles here, haven't we? So we go, we drop down, you'll see all the angles, right? So, and I used to start going one, two, three, and swapping the angles. And then obviously I had the audio as well. Um, and what would happen is I was getting jerking and playback issues. And what I didn't realise is that Final Cut has to transcode them. So when you've created the multicam, if you if you leave your computer alone and you watch this here, you'll see that it might take an hour to get to 100%. And that's because Apple will transcode all them multicam clips. So if there's four clips at an hour each or 50, uh, half an hour, well, there'll probably be about eight or 10 clips, at 40 minutes, it's got to transcode them all. So if you start trying to edit it immediately, You've no chance, absolute no chance. And that's where your spinning beach ball is coming from when you create multicam clips. If you leave Final Cut to get to 100%, then start pressing 1, 2, 3, 4, you'll absolutely be gobsmacked at how smooth it is. You can sit back and have a coffee and go 1, 2, 5, 4, and it'll play back really silky smooth. That's why I tell Final Cut to transcode all my media on the way in so that I don't have to wait when I come to create the multicam now so I'm creating the multicam I'm ready to edit I don't want to wait for it so if I've done it before I start actually working in Final Cut when I get and create this multicam it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to give it set a check and it's done it's already ready I can press one five six and start working immediately instead of waiting yeah I'd, i had to wait at the beginning but that's no problem because i'm away doing something else but when i'm in final cut i'm in final cut i don't want to be in final cut and sat here waiting half an hour to an hour for the multicam to transcode i'd rather be downstairs doing something else while it's transcoding on its own and that's it that's how it works and it'll run absolute silky smooth for you i mean this is transcoded now so if i just can i just play this from here if let me just move on top so if i go let me just swap the let me just put it on to just swap the vi the audio on the video right and then i'm going to tell it now to only swap video so if i go and then i go one three and i'm swapping between the video the angles now and you'll see that absolutely smooth really really silky smooth and that's because they're already transcoded. I'll just stop that. That's because they're already transcoded into Apple Pro Res. And you can have four or five angles there, and it'll absolutely play spot on. You can just sit there and bang through it. You'll watch your, your half an hour, 40 minute wedding or interview to you, Matt, and you'll just better press one, four, six, eight, and it'll be absolutely smooth. And I ain't got, like I say, it's just a small two one terabyte hard drives. If you are, I'll just give you another quick tip here before you go. If you're a person that's going to leave loads of projects on your RAID drive, like at minute, if you look, I've only got, that's my library, the new Final Cut Pro 10.1. You'll see it's 150 gig look. Um, it, it creates a library, and if you show package contents, it puts all the footage inside. And you'll see, if you look at my transcoded media, that is the multicam look. That's the multicam. So that multicam that you've just looked at, all these here, they're all multicam clips. And they've all been transcoded. And let's see the size of them. They're massive when they get transcoded. Look, they're 128 gig. Um, and that's it. That, that That's why the multicam played back so, so smooth when you watched it then. You can even choose high quality playback. Um, and it'll play absolutely spot on. And that's with just two cheap hard drives. And I ain't got a separate SSD for scratch. And I ain't got an SSD for read. And I ain't got an SSD for write. It's reading on two... And, and it's reading off the RAID drive, which is, is quicker than a normal drive, admittedly. And like I tell you, if you're going to save loads of projects on there, the read speed will slow down. So if you've got a project on it, monitor your read speed. And if you think that that's how you're going to work, add a third one into the equation. And that'll give you another 100, 120 meg. <coughs> to um, 
to, to allow when you slow down. But I ain't got a problem doing a complete full wedding. I mean, like the full 50 minute ceremony, the half an hour speeches, that's a multicam as well on that drive there. And it runs smooth as silk as long as I transcode the media. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and have a good Christmas or a good New Year, should I say. Mm -hmm.